Hello everyone, in today's video we're taking a look at the navigational systems on board the Beechcraft Starship by Black Square. Let's get started. Now this aircraft has a bunch of very, very interesting options as far as navigational sources go. So we have everything from looking out the window and uh, doing things the old fashioned way, kind of tough in today's weather. Uh, we also have the ability to do VOR, we can do automatic direction finder, which unfortunately we don't have a lot of in the region that I happen to be in. We could also use Omega, which is a really, really slick system where basically you're comparing the phase of signals in order to determine your position roughly, the word is roughly. We also have the ability to try laterate using a fancy term, our position based on DME or VOR. And of course, we also have two different GPSs on board if that's something that we require. It's uh, kind of one of those uh, neat little things that it's just there's so many cool options on here. So what we're going to do first is we're going to float down here and talk a little bit about kind of our options and I kind of go from there. So we have a flight plan in our computer right now traveling from Hartford to Portland, Maine. Now we're making pretty good progress here. Uh, you can see this is the position of our aircraft right here. If we wanted to bring the screen up, by the way, you just go up to present position map and hit the display button. And it does a really, really nice job of uh, kind of letting you know who's in the neighborhood kind of a thing like that. Now for navigational control, there's a lot of different things that can help identify where we are other than, like I said, the visual choices a few moments ago. So let's go ahead and open up our uh, controls here. I'm gonna press index. And I'm gonna come down here where it says FMS data press that button real quick. Now that this page is open, I'm going to go over to index here. I'm going to press FMS and I'm going to click on the performance button. Now, the reason I'm bringing this up is I want to show you a couple different details here. Uh, one thing, of course, you can see on my performance page, uh, this is my rough distance as well as my rough winds, everything along those lines, pretty much ready to go. Uh, you also notice we have a rough idea of our current distance to our destination. Everything is, you know, like I said, looking pretty darn good today. However, our position is not certain. Hmm, you say, let me show you. So if I were to go to my systems control, and go to sensors, you will notice that I only have one system navigating us right now. And that is a VLF Omega. This is a very low frequency Omega system. As a matter of fact, if I click on FMS position, you can see that my current certainty position is about 0.1. Now that's not awful. That's actually pretty confident as far as my current position is in the world. That's uh, not bad. Now, if I come back an hour later, uh, you will have seen that position will have drastically changed. Now watch this. You can see right now, this is pretty updated. I updated it just a minute ago, so it's looking pretty good. But let's say we go back into the system again, go back to my sensors, and I'm gonna enable VOR DME, and I'm going to disable Omega. So now we're using VOR and DME, basically using trilateration in order to identify where our current position is. Now, the interesting thing is here, is if you choose to enable this, you can either pick the VOR stations you want to use for your position, or you can let the computer do it for you. Now, to let it pick it for you, which you're going to have to do, and this is important, so you go to the nav page, you have to make sure navigation tuning is set to automatic. Otherwise, um, if you're not manually selecting it, uh, you're going to get a big nasty surprise uh, when you find yourself in a situation where your aircraft has no idea where it is because it can't tune to the next VOR station that it wants. Now, if I go like this and go back to my present position map, back to display, one of the things you will notice, if I zoom out a little bit here, is it will try to actually grab on to certain VORs that exist. I don't know why it does this. It's kind of a new thing that it does. But uh, what it will try to do is reach out and actually find stations and basically measure our distances by doing those exact items. And it's going to attempt to trilaterate our current position. Now, one of the cool things is, is we can manually do that as well. If I were to go back to my system control here and go back to my sensors FMS position, you can see my current confidence is 1.2 nautical miles, which is pretty darn garbage. Now, let's say I wanted to manually update this position using a VOR that I want to use. Let's say, for example, we want to use Gardner. Now, we can use that to update our position. So we can see our position right now. If I were to go back up to my index page where it says initialize system, you can see I can update my position and I can even pick a specific waypoint. You can see I can literally dial in my current position right this second if I knew what it was. I could do it by a name. I could also do it by a position fix. I like the position fix mode, but before we do position fix, I'm gonna go down here to nav and I'm gonna pre-select a frequency that I know we can use. So I'm gonna use 116, or five. I'm gonna go boop. Pops that in rare. Uh, that's Gardner. That's right here where my mouse is slowly rotating. Do you see how it says the one on it right now? So it recognizes that this is what we're going to do. I'm going to go back over to my nav page. I'm sorry, my index page. Head over to my initialized system. I'm going to update my position by VOR DME fix. I'll click right here and it asks for the name. So I'm going to come in here and type in GDM, which is going to be the name. Shut off my keyboard, press the enter key. It says, are you sure? You press OK. 
So what it's going to try to do is it's going to try to manually reach out to the station and try to figure out where it is based on where that is. So it looks like it's completed that task here. I'll go back to navigation. I'll put it back onto automatic tuning. We'll go back into index, go back over to our FMS data. Oops, sorry, wrong page. Index, uh, we'll go back to, I was right. Uh, nope. Why do I keep doing it backwards? There we go. Sensors, FMF's position. And you can see now that we are way more confident about our position. And now you can see we're actually considerably off course here. So even though we are theoretically uh, on course with this, you can see that our position estimate is actually not so great. And uh, the interesting thing here, of course, is uh, you see our GPS position right there is a little different. And you can see now we've actually drifted again because now we're using that other VOR that we just tuned to for the purposes of trying to capture our position. So let's go ahead and go back to our page that we had a moment ago here, system control sensors, and let's go ahead and enable VLF. Now the VLF, like I said, is using that a phase change between these very, very far apart radio stations. And the cool thing here is we have to basically tell it what station we are, because if it, there's a lot of ambiguity in signals from these particular stations. So one of the things we can do is we can actually update the position that it currently is. And you have a button that says update VLF, I can click that and say update VLF. And what that will do is use the position in the computer for the purposes of updating where the VLF needs to be so we can start using the VLF's position. Now keep in mind, if you got any of these wrong at any point, you're busted. Now let's go back to sensors here, FMS position. So you can see here that our current confidence is actually pretty good. Uh, we have a very, very confident feel of VOR2. Reason being is we're basically flying over the top of it right now. Uh, the second thing is we got that really, really good confident VOR position here, a VLF position rather, of about half a mile. Now you're saying, well, this is pretty old fashioned navigation. If you're going across the ocean, this would be pretty terrifying to use. Yeah, it would, because uh, you have no VORs over the ocean. So it makes it very challenging. So let's talk about the GNSS. Uh, this is going to be your satellite navigational updates. So what I'm going to do is go back to my system control here. Uh, you, can, you can go to sensors, and I can enable this. Now, the cool thing is we're now running on GNSS, which is going to be providing us with our pretty darn accurate position. So if I were to go to FMS position, you will notice my confidence here is within, you know, three or four feet. And it also is going to be able to basically update this position to be a little bit more accurate for that particular purpose. Now, the cool thing here is we can theoretically run off that the entire time. We can shut these two off and we are literally only updating our current position based on GPS if it bothers you using those other systems. Like I said, it's pretty darn confident. Look at this, 36 feet. I mean, yo, like that that's about as good as you're going to get. But the reality is leaving all these on at all times kind of gives you the advantage of being able to kind of keep them updated in case something fails. And again, you'll notice again, I've drifted quite a bit off course here, just giving you an idea of how quick that happens inside this aircraft. So now that we've kind of taken a look at how we enabled those, is there anything else you can know about? And the answer is yes. There's another GPS on board this aircraft, and uh, that's this guy down here. Uh, that's basically a good old-fashioned GNS 430 Whiskey. And this is exactly what you can expect. I can come in here and treat it just the way that you would do a uh, normal 1K GDM. If I wanted to go to Gardner, if I wanted to go to PWN Portland, Maine, I could just pop that in there, enter, enter, and you can see that there's my uh, GPS course. Now, here's the tricky part, and this is important. So what I'm going to do is go over to my autopilot real quick. I'm going to synchronize my heading, even though I'm off course. I know. Flip the heading control on, and what I'm going to do is tell the computer to use the GNS position, not the FMS position. So if I come over here and press the GNS, hear that angry sound? That angry sound is the automatic pilot shutting off because it's like, dude, what did you just do? It has lost its FMS control because it is now running on this down here. The other thing I want to show you is, did you see what happened to my course? I am way off course now, so that's kind of obnoxious. So if I were to go ahead and press enter, enter, kind of a thing like that, you can see that's all resynchronized. GPS is good to go. I can now press my navigation hold, my altitude hold mode. And you see how the aircraft is now turning? We're actually using the GNSS off of here, not the FMS. So we're not using any of those cool systems I just showed you how to resynchronize. We are 100% on the default control here. And you can actually hide this if this is something that bothers you on top of it. So as you can see from this video, our navigation system's very, very, very sophisticated. We have regular VOR, NDB, all that other stuff as well. We're not going to take a look at that today, but at the very least, you now have a much better idea of the sources of these as well as some of the controls and methods you can use to update them. Enjoy.